Hi, we're back for one of our coffee chats, aren't we? And we have just had a lovely, lovely chat with Charlie Ward, which will be on both our Rumble channels. In fact, we'll do an intro video for that at the end, Bryce. Perfect. Um, but how are you doing today, Bryce? I'm good. It was wonderful to start my morning off with you and Charlie. I always find, well, you obviously are one of my besties, but Charlie's always just such a bundle of sunshine and just always so positive. That's one thing I really respect about Charlie is how regardless of what's going on, he's always maintained such a positive, stable perspective of what's happening. And so it's always nice to chit chat with him. And he's just off camera too. He's, he's the same off camera as he, as he is on, right, Catherine? He's just so lovely. Oh, exactly. Exactly. So parent and just like, you really feel like you're just chatting with a friend, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about this community. So it was, it was amazing to start my morning off with the two of you. Fantastic. And I was just telling you before we started, I had a very exciting night last night because my new cat arrived at 11.30 last night. Um, the people that bought her over for Romania, amazing. I will put the link to that charity um, below the video because I, ca I cannot. They're really well done. They really, really care about the animals. They do such a great job. So I had an exciting night with my new baby. She's adorable, Mitzi. So you will be seeing lots more of her soon. But she's settling in really well. So today we were going to have a bit of a chat about something that's really close to our hearts, weren't we? About standing in your own integrity. Yeah. And this kind of came up with a conversation we were having with Charlie, actually, because I like that he brought this up. Um, you know, and I think, uh, and I've, I've said this before, I know Catherine, like for 99% of the comments that we have on our channels are lovely and are just so amazing. And they're so kind, but you always get these like comments that are really kind of abusive. And mm -hmm. we know Charlie is one that's experienced that a lot. And, and it got me thinking, you know, I know when we have a platform, when you see people on, on YouTube, and I think uh, we talked about with David Cohen as well. I can't remember if we spoke about this on air, or off air. There's this certain thing that happens with people that they expect you to maybe have more information or that you know what's going on. And, and the truth of the matter is that none of us really do. We're all just like everybody watching. We're just trying to figure this all out together, pulling our research together to help each other. And so one thing I've noticed is that a lot of times people hold other people, they, they put a certain level of expectation on other people that they don't put on themselves. Yeah. And I think that's something we all need to start looking at, even for Catherine and me, for our own personal, like, am I holding too much expectation for someone that I wouldn't even hold for myself? You know, are we more forgiving? You know, if, if let's just say, for example, um, you think that something's going to happen on March 11th, we'll just pick a random date and it doesn't happen. Do you hold that same? Do you get mad at yourself the same way you would get mad at somebody on YouTube if they said March 11th? Does that make sense? Like we hold these yeah. people up to a level of, um, uh, that, that we don't we don't really hold for ourselves and that comes from that integrity and and being able to look at somebody else in the same as a human being the same as you are am i making sense i don't know if it I make makes complete sense and it's something that's come up quite a lot you know i see in the personal life as well it's like you know a lot of people expect other people to do things that they're not doing themselves they're very good at making excuses for why they can't do this or or why they've got an excuse for feeling like this but they expect everyone else to they're just waiting to notice what's wrong or what they can criticize rather than looking with the eyes of what's right and we've all said this all the way along you know you when you and i are doing videos most of our videos our chats between friends and we're sharing out loud the things and talking through problems as they arrive and talking through what we think about situations, but absolutely not prepared, not having any of the answers as your t-shirt shows. Um, let, more I know. And on again today. The more I learn the lesson, oh, lovely Liz. Liz um, yes. <laughs> her shop link is below. Um, and you get 15% off and I've got my one to one to one on again, but it's so, so important, isn't it? Because it's like, you know, it's like we talk about parenting and this is whether you've got a two legged child or a four legged child, children do what you do, not what you say. If you're not walking the talk in areas of your life, then that's what you're, uh, is going to trigger you most about other people. So we say it all the time, you know, if something's triggering you, the great thing about YouTube, about Rumble is it's got an off button. Yeah. Other areas of life haven't necessarily got such an easy off button. But if 
it's triggering us. Yes, the person might be dictating, in which case just don't listen to them. Why yeah. are you listen to them anyway? But if not, why is it having such a reaction on you? And nine times out of 10 is because it's highlighting at a conscious or unconscious level something in yourself that's unresolved. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's your, you're noticing and that's that reaction because it's, it is pick, it's like picking out a scab within you. And I think moving forward, we've talked about this a lot of the meditation series of all that kind of stuff. Like we have to start taking accountability for our own emotions instead of projecting them onto somebody else. You know, as before we were getting on camera, we were talking at, you know, if somebody disagrees with a topic that we're debating or talking about on a show, absolutely leave a comment give your reasons why you see something in a different perspective that's why we have a platform we don't have a platform just to have an echo chamber we have a platform yeah. so that we can grow and learn but when somebody leaves a comment like on my stuff if someone leaves a comment that's just downright abusive towards me or towards my guest or whatever with no type of like intellectual conversation i delete it right away because it's not yeah. that's not helping the situation and so if but people who feel you know I've, I've talked about this on david zublik's show before because i get a lot of really nasty emails from people in the fundamentalist church because we're going through the missing books of the bible and i'm also breaking down a lot of these really um cult-like fundamentalist groups here in the united states yeah and when people send aggressive emails because we're talking about this stuff it has nothing to do with me it is everything to do with them being triggered because there's something with that we've said that's like poke them a little bit. And that triggering is not is not for me to have to deal with or David, it's for them to then yeah. look, look inside themselves. And sometimes we react nasty because of fear, because we're afraid what the other person is saying might be right and that we might be wrong. And so that fear of that ego, we talked last week about the ego comes up and comes out. Um, and so as Charlie was saying that, I was like, this is something really important that we all of us need to look at, not just those of us who are on YouTube or those of us who, you know, have a podcast or whatever. It's every human being needs to start looking at that, their own integrity. Am I holding up other people, whether that's friends, family, YouTubers, celebrities, in a, with a certain level of expectation that I'm not holding on myself? You know, that's where that yeah, integrity is. Yeah, that's so important. And um, what I've seen in sort of daily lives, without going into too many details, because I can't say too much, moment, but there's a lot of people that are always expecting others to sort out the world's products. So are you seeing any level of abuse and not saying something about it? Because, of course, there's always misinterpretations as well, because everyone's got different standards for all areas of life about what's acceptable and what's not and what your own belief systems are. But if you're seeing something that you, you triggers deep down in that this isn't right, whether it's for an animal, whether it's for a human – and you choose to stay silent, then you are part of the problem. Mm -hmm. and, and just expecting everyone else to do that for you and do it. So sometimes we have to really look inside ourselves and saying, what am I contributing energetically to this planet? And am I being the type of person that buries my head in the sand and, and lets these things go unnoticed and assume someone else is going to sort it out for me? Or am I in whatever way is possible in my circumstance, because we're not all saying we've all got to be president or prime minister or, or leader of this, but in whatever way possible, am I living my life in integrity with my core values? Absolutely. In, with an alignment of what I, I, I say, you know, I see this in the spiritual community all the time. Um, how many people can talk about talk the spiritual talk, but they don't walk the spiritual walk. Yeah. You know, it's like they wear, we, well, we call that spiritual materialism. They wear the outfit, but they don't act in the integrity of the action, which they are teaching. And that's something that is super, super important in, in every aspect. Yeah. Like you're saying, you, you have to be in alignment with what you're saying. You have to be in alignment. If you expect a certain level of integrity out of somebody else, you have to expect that out of yourself. If you see something, say something, if there's something wrong, say something about it. You know, and if um, you're wrong and the, you're giving the other person a chance to explain yourself, sorry, I interrupted you there, <laughs> but it's this fear of being wrong and offending people, isn't it? And actually, how are you going to feel if something terrible happens because you haven't said something? Could you actually live with yourself for that? And if you say something and you've misinterpreted the situation, you'll know in your heart, you'll know 
whether the person's pulling the wool over your eyes or yeah. whether actually you were right to raise the alarm bells or not. And we're not always right. We can get it wrong because, you know, our, what I see isn't always, you know, it can be played with as illusions. Yeah. But it really worries me, actually, how many people sort of do do that in terms of, and, and, and as you said, they're expecting everyone else to know this and say this, even to the extent, Bryce, we've spoken about this before, about, well, so-and-so said this. So let's take an example that we were talking about with Medina and David the other day. The floods in Australia. Lots of different people and, and um, who are talking about it publicly have got different opinions about whether those are man-made, whether they're natural and everything. And they're all their opinions of what they're getting from their guides in whatever form that might be. So then I will then get people saying, oh, ask about this and ask about that. And is that person right or is that person right? And I'm like, no, I'm not getting into that because both of those or all of them are entitled to their own opinions. And your job, if you're choosing to listen to those people, is say, which resonates with me? Or is it a completely different answer that none of those have even, you know, take the flat earth? Is it flat or is it round or is it something completely different? Yeah. It doesn't have to be A or B, this black yeah. and white thinking. And it's okay to be like, you know, to be in a, in a place where you don't know. We've talked about yes. that before, like with what's going on down under, like, I don't know. I still don't mm -hmm. know. Like, and I'm okay with being in that area of not knowing. Um, and that, I learned that again. I think I've mentioned this, but David Garig, uh, one of my major teachers here in the United States, the reason why I was able to even go to India, he's just this brilliant. He is one of the top notch, like yoga teachers and he's brilliant with philosophy and Somebody asked him a question once in a conference and he was like, I don't know. And it was just so like, <sighs> like here was this man who seems to like really know everything. He really practices it. And you can tell he really practices what he preaches. And then to be very comfortable saying like, I don't have an answer for you with that particular question. That was so inspiring to me to be able to say like, it's cool not to know. Like, yeah, it's fine. Like you don't have to have an answer for something. You can wait a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's okay to be in that area of not, not having an opinion yet or having your opinion change. That's okay too. Really important one. I mean, I have lost count of the times where I've got new knowledge or new information or a new feeling, and I've completely changed my opinion on things, you yes. know. And that's okay. And so therefore, when you're, when you're watching somebody else or talking to under, under somebody else, have that same level of compassion and understanding with them too. That you just because somebody has a different opinion than you or somebody else that you admire doesn't mean you have to hate that person or leave them like an abusive comment. You just understand that there's a different perspective. You can still like that person. I mean, hell, not, not, there, you're going to find no one in life that has the exact same opinion on you on everything. Most of the exactly. people you're closest to in your life have to have differing opinions on things and you still love them and you still respect them. And so I think we need to understand too, and we've talked about this before, Catherine. It, when I was a kid, I've said this, and I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. I feel like my generation, I was born in 1983. My generation was the very last generation to have a proper childhood. It was yeah. right before the internet. It was right, like really on the cusp of the internet, the cusp of cell phones. We still had to go to the library and pull books down to do research. Um, and we did, we were forced to do debate classes in high school, in my high school, not even, not even going into, you know, like in high school. And we were given the side, like we didn't pick the side. They gave us the side that we, and, and the whole point of that debate was to learn, was to learn yeah, different exactly. perspectives, critical and things. It's really, skills. it's so, so important. And I'm loving, you know, it's so interesting. It's so often if I'm having conversations with people, people assume just because I'm not being really rude and saying, no, you're wrong. Well, one, I don't know they're wrong. Because yeah. who's to say that my opinion is any, my opinion is no more valid than their opinion and no less valid. But equally, honestly, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've changed my opinion based on new information. Thought, oh, my God. And isn't that the whole point about learning is like it's like a best movie with a plot chest. It's like I've seen something different now. And also, I'm very, very well aware that, you know, you can be mistaken. There's so much research that shows that 
what we see is much more to do with our belief systems and how we're interpreting the electrical signals coming in through our eyes and what's really true, which is why so many witness statements can't be relied upon. That's because it, yeah. you, cannot, you can be so easily manipulated, as we're seeing now, to believe you saw something that wasn't actually there. You, I was about to say that I, I love watching true crime stuff and watching these detectives sh- like tr- l- listening to the investigations and I, it's it never fails. They have multiple different cases. They'll say you'll have a crime take place. You'll have 20 witnesses there to witness it. And all 20 people are going to have a different story. Yeah. And they are they they are, they're doing it from the best place. And most of them, unless they're the murderer, yeah. <laughs> are, are, are genuinely saying what they think they saw. But what they think they saw and what they actually saw is so affected by our emotions, by our subconscious belief systems, by how good your eyesight is, by how good your hearing is and everything. And, you know, it's it's so fascinating. I mean, I used to be part of a book club, which I absolutely love with a really great group of friends. And my favourite bit about it was, one, it made me read books that I never normally would have read before. But secondly, I absolutely love the fact that we'd all read the book and we'd all pick out completely different things. And it was just fascinating to see because you assume that if you watch the same movie, if you read the same book, you're going to get the same information out of it, or I had before. And then you realise, no, not at all. You know, yeah. And I've read the same book twice and, you know, got completely different information out of it the second time that I completely missed the first time. Do you know, it's so funny. We were talking about with Medina and David, the movie Midsummer that David Zubik yes. had me watch and I told you to watch. Well, when I, I saw the episode, when I had sent you the link, I found all these like commentaries on YouTube over this movie. So I went and listened to some. And after I was listening to some of them, I was like, that's so interesting. I didn't notice that. And it made me want to go back and rewatch the movie to see exactly. what these people saw because there was such a, apparently a deeper storyline there that I didn't even pick up on the first time I watched it. And so it is, fat- and, but see, that's the thing is if you're willing to be open, if you're willing to have an open mind, even having your opinions but still having an open mind to hear what other people have to say it can open up a whole new world of understanding for you as an individual you know it's it's, it is the more i learn the less i know because your opinions are what you know but then when you learn more about other people's perspectives you see a whole different reality and you're right like again i'll tell you something i'm i'm now like blown my mind like i studying the biblical mary magdalene and yashua and knowing that the geography is off, knowing that their story is wrong. If you had asked me a year ago if I would believe right now that Mary Magdalene nor Yahshua were of uh, Jewish descent, I would have told you you were crazy. But now with my research, Mary Magdalene was Greek. Yahshua was Egyptian. Like now my, it's like, like this whole, you know, we're all, we all have these different perceptions. But then if we're, we allow ourselves to actually read different things and see, It just this whole world opens up to you. And again, it doesn't mean that that you're a bad person because what you believed a year ago or last week is not what you believe now. It just means you're an evolving person. And that's what we all came here to be is evolve and to learn. Exactly. And even evolution, we talked about that with David and Medina. You know, even that is a controversy because we think it has to mean this, but it means so many different things. It's so, so much bigger than that. And it I love the fact of that because you know what we also i think it comes up for me a lot is when we're talking about this we're saying this is the way we see things without any expectation that others should agree with us and i think that's a really important point because so many people think if you're talking about something you're trying to ram your opinion down their throat but we're just having a conversation and saying that's the way we see things and it makes me laugh when people say, well, so-and-so said this and therefore it's true. And I'm like, well, that might be your truth, but it doesn't have to be my truth. And that is absolutely fine. What I want to say too, with people like, you know, so-and-so said this, and we see that a lot, but what do you think? Yes. You know, I don't think I, most of the people, most of our friends and our colleagues and peers on this platform that I know personally 
don't want you to hold what they have to say as the gospel. You know, they're just putting out their opinions and what they know from what they have so far. And so if you're relying on, you know, what I say, or Catherine says, or Charlie Ward or anybody, what they say as the gospel, then you're doing yourself a disservice because we want to hear your opinion too. Like I, we always encourage people to leave their opinions in the comment section because Catherine and I want to hear what you have to say too, because you're a part of this conversation as well. You don't have to believe everything we say. It's, it's, it's an ever evolving, changing thing. So I would say for people that are hanging on to what somebody else says, first of all, that other person you're listening to is also a human being like you. And therefore is susceptible to making mistakes, is susceptible to having their own perception, their own eyes on something. So listen to what that person says. If it resonates with you, it doesn't, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, What do you think? You know, and that's constructive that's- comments on that because yeah. sorry to interrupt, but one oh. of the most interesting, um, which is a polite way of saying it, experiences we have is when we speak to certain people and then suddenly you get a barrage of, I've lost all respect for you because I can't believe that you're speaking to this person. And that for me is not the type of comment I'm talking about. And you might say, well, you can't be picking and choosing. I can because if you're going to make it personal, so. I trust anyone who's listening to this to make your own decisions up about everyone, including me. Yeah. And I would appreciate the same respect back. And it doesn't mean I'm right and you're wrong. And it doesn't mean you're right and I'm wrong. And it's absolutely fine if we disagree about different people that you have got to go with your intuition. But what what I don't like seeing is people being abusive mm-hmm. about other people. So I'm going to put a very specific example out here. So the, every time I speak to Charlie Ward, I get people saying, oh, my God, I've lost all respect for you that you're speaking to him. Have you not seen the video his son did? And I'm like, I have. And I have one opinion on that video, and you might have another. That's fine. But if your opinion is just because his son's made a video on him, that that means that I shouldn't be speaking to Charlie because if it does, you're going to disrespect everything I say, then that's your issue, not mine. I might have seen the official, but I don't have to agree with you on the video. And I respect your opinion if you think that. And in which case, don't listen to it. And and please don't listen to it because why would you put yourself through that? Yeah. And that's kind of doing what the other side does too. It's that idea of censorship. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that whole idea of cancel culture, which is something I'm absolutely opposed to is cancel culture. That's, yeah. that's not what we're here. We stand for on this side of the aisle. As far as I'm concerned, we don't censor unless we have to watch our words on YouTube, which you guys know that we have to do that, but we've come up with clever ways of saying what we have to say. And you guys know what we're talking about and, and canceling people just because they maybe have made a mistake in their life. You know, and yeah. Charlie actually, I haven't seen the video, but Charlie actually brought that up in our conversation today and he's mm-hmm. owned up to stuff. And I, that's amazing. Like if you can sit there and say like, I have so much, I mean, the sexiest thing a person can do is be like, listen, I fucked up exactly learned from that. That is the most attractive thing that someone can do. Um, and that means that they have, and I've said this before with Chantel, like from Aquarius Rising Africa, these, these, these things that happen to us, these, these things, mistakes, we'll say mistakes we make, these things we do. If we learn from that mistake, then it's not a mistake because we exactly. learned we grew from that. And we, 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 it's, that's the alchemy, right? That's turning the lead into gold. And, and so if we are if on this side of this, of this argument of our global times right now, if we're canceling people because of a state of a mistake they made, or if we're trying to censor people because we don't agree with their opinion, then we're no better than the other side. We're no better exactly. than the mainstream media. You yeah. know? And so I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to cancel anybody because there's mistakes I've made in my life. And if we, if all of us sat, turn around, sit and look at the, your past life, if, if there's probably stuff we've all done that if someone knew about, we would be canceled as well. So, completely. and what we're not talking about, so we, you know, there's opinions with respect Mm -hmm. and there's a difference, isn't there? And it's like, what is your intent behind something? So if you're saying something or writing something, what is your intent? Is your intent to make the world a better place? Is your, or is your intent to make someone else feel bad? Yeah. And there's a huge difference. Are you throwing a temper tantrum? Or are you having a discussion? Yeah. And if yeah. you are having a temper tantrum, which I do frequently, <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> admit it. Admit it and say sorry. Yeah. You know, and that's another good uh, good lesson as well. But there's so much we're all learning on this journey, isn't it? It's it's just fantastic because we are all learning so much, and it's sort of everyone who's going through this everyone who's taking the time to question everything and and listen to different people and listen to themselves and looking at different sources of information than they might have before and and resonating with some and not resonating with others that that is part of life's journey isn't it absolutely absolutely and I will say too, we talked about the lionizing. Like I know none of us on this platform want us to be want to be lionized. I don't want to be lionized. Like I'm not, I'm not a celebrity. I don't. I'm not, I'm not. I'm just like everybody else. And so I think when we stop the lionizing, well, we will stop putting that that level of expectation on people that we don't put on ourselves. And so, yeah. And when I think a lot of the other thing is, I mean, we've said it a lot, and it's nothing to do. We talk about having a channel and things like that, but. The important thing for me is find people that you can have fascinating, open, non-judgmental conversations with because it's so healing on every level, isn't it? And the reason we quite often say we'll start your own channel or something, it doesn't have to be a channel. You don't have to press record. But we have so many people don't have at the moment people in their immediate family or community where they can have these conversations with. And that can be really, really hard for people, can't yeah. they? They can't get their expression yes. out. And I think that's why a lot of us started channels, to be honest with yeah. you. Because I've said this, I mean, if it wasn't for my channel, I wouldn't know you, Catherine. I wouldn't know all these people that are now my best friends, you know, that we, because we literally, I, Catherine and I talk all day. You know, they're like, we, we literally text all day. Um, and there's Stephanie and I text all day. There's multiple people that we talk to all day that we all do shows together. And um, I, if I hadn't created my channel, I wouldn't have found Catherine, you know, and, and that, in that sense, I'm a little spoiled because I spend my day talking to people who have a, a lot of the same ideas that I do, you know? And so, yeah. And, you know, Stephanie, our friend, Stephanie, she, um, oh, yeah. she, has, she has groups that she's formed. Um, sp she does spiritual perspectives of our great awakening. And she actually has these groups of people that, zoom together as support groups and they've all now it's evolved so big that people are now breaking off and doing their own support groups away from stephanie she's helping them coordinate Brilliant. so that people yeah are friends and there are people all over like i hop on, when i can i'll hop onto some of these calls with these groups if i if i'm free and there are people all over the world like just chit chatting and at this point she's been doing it for so long now that they're all like literally friends with each other and are texting each other and and so it's creating this uh these plat and these these people don't have most of these people don't have channels they're not they don't want to put their face out there like we do i don't know if Catherine and i are brave or, or stupid for putting our face out there sometimes but <laughs> well, no, it's a definite double-edged sword doesn't it it's but but yeah, so it's out there. And I'm actually, what I'll do in my, I'll put Stephanie's the email address for the support group. So if there's somebody out there that is looking for friends, you're looking yeah. for people to talk to, I'll put that email address that she has specifically for that down in the description box below so that you can get into can one of those. send that to me so I can yeah. do the same? Because I for love sure. the fact that she's done that. It's just... It's a lot of work for her, but she's doing it because we know how important it is. We do completely sympathize that, you know, and sometimes you do vent mm -hmm. and perhaps people vent in a comment because they've got no one else to vent to. And I really get that. I do get it. That's why I'm so grateful that we can have these conversations because it's like a problem. I know a problem shared is a problem halved, or you can say a problem shared is a problem transferred, but it's not like that. If your intent is not to dump your shit on someone else, but to talk out loud and, and open up your perspective of the world and how you view things, because I will look at a situation from my level of consciousness and then Bryce or David or Shanti or someone will come in and they'll say, oh, but you haven't looked at it from this one. And what about this one? I was like, oh, my God, no, I didn't even know to look from that direction. And and that's what's so lovely, because if your intent is to to grow and be a better person then it's not dumping on someone else no and that's what these support groups are because again i've sat in some of them before when i can and it literally is people talking about some of the most vulnerable parts of their lives they start off talking about the great awakening and then and they become and all these people become these like voices of friends that are helping each other and like i said even she does have people from all over the world so let's say like you know, on the East Coast here, I'm five hours behind you guys in the UK. Well, let's say, and that's how Stephanie, where she's on the East Coast as well.
well. Uh, well, let's say there's like multiple people from the UK that are having a hard time getting in the times of the East Coast. Well, then Stephanie will give you free re free reigns to like do your own group. And so all exactly. these groups are popping up and it's just amazing. And that's, and that, and that does help that the groups that I've sat on with her, where none of us are therapists, none of us were just there being friends with each other. And it's, it's really does shift when you have people that you can talk to and again, get their opinion. And if you have an issue in your life that you don't want somebody's opinion on, then don't bring it up for that time. Let it keep it with you for a moment before you're ready to be vulnerable to other people's perspective, you know? So, yeah. So I will put that email address down below and I'll put, also put a link to her channel down below too. So since we, uh, since we brought her up. So, uh, so yeah, it's really good. I love the work she's doing and I'm just loving all these people stepping forward and doing something in whatever way. And it doesn't have to be anything big. You know, I've got the most gorgeous neighbor who, after the storms, has just gone around clearing up after everything, clearing the pathways, making them safe, tape up the ones that aren't safe. And no one asked him to do it. He's just as busy as the rest of us. But that's his thing, because that's how he can contribute. And it's so, so important to our community. So everyone's got something that they can communicate, uh, can contribute. And all of them are just as important as all the other bits. It doesn't have to be something dramatic. It doesn't have to be something big. But it's so brilliant. So shout out to Richard. You're an absolute star. Well, it's funny <laughs> you brought really that up because we brought, talked about the starfish story, which I'll, I'll, I'll say again after yeah. this. You said that when my parents got divorced, um, now we live in the area of the world. We get a lot of tornadoes. We were used to tornadoes here in, in Georgia. And there was one day that we had a tornado and um, a tree had blown up over our house and knocked the roof off, roof off of our porch in the back in the house I grew mm -hmm. up in. And because my dad wasn't around and my mother didn't know what to do. Well, that morning after the tornado, she went outside and all the men in the neighborhood were already out there in our yard with chainsaws getting for my mom because they knew my mom was, my mom was a single, it makes me emotional even to this day. They, yeah. they knew my mom was a single mom at that time. And, you know, women in the South are at that point, weren't really raised to know how to, that's man's job, you know, to do that kind yeah. of stuff. And so they stepped in and without even, they were all out there with their chainsaws moving the tree for my mom so that they could get the roof off of the backyard and, and kind of help her get it set because, you wow. know, they, no one asked them to, that. That's, that's, that's the beauty of humanity. It's like, yeah. uh, it's, it, it doesn't have to be a grandiose effort that you're doing. I was telling Catherine growing up down here, uh, we always were told the story of the starfish. And after this huge hurricane came through and all these starfish were thrown onto the shore from the ocean, there was a man walking down the beach, picking up one starfish after the other, throwing it back in the ocean. And another man walked up and said, what are you doing, dude? Like you're wasting your time. You're not going to be able to save all these starfish. And he picks up another starfish and throws it in. He goes, well, just save that one. Exactly. Yeah. And that's all it takes is just the one. That's why you and I, you know, you, we've got dogs from Romania and India and, and it's like, yeah, every life matters. I know you're not allowed to say that phrase anymore, but it's so, so true. And if you're the one that needs that help, you can't, you can't everyone can't sort out every problem in the world, but you can sort out the problems that you've got awareness of and that you've got some skill to do it. And it's just, it's just such a wonderful when you see people doing that, it just really restores your faith in everything and it makes you think, I know everything's going to be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I love our chats. I love our coffee chats. Um, <laughs> I hope if anyone listens, it's helpful. And if it's not, um, that's absolutely fine if it's not for you either. But I really hope everyone's having a really magical day and that they've got someone in their lives that they can have these chats with. I just had an idea. When, we're, when all this is over and we're able to travel again, I think we should go on on a tour of coffee chats and invite anybody that town to like meet us at a coffee store and just have a chit chat and just go around <laughs> to different towns. It like, is. We're going to be so many names and things that crop up and sort of saying, I hope I meet each day. And it was really funny because before this started, I'm not a naturally huggy person. I hug a lot of animals, but I'm not a naturally hug a person until I know them. Um, whereas, you know, sort of, I see my children's generation have grown up hugging everyone and we didn't, it was more like, you know, someone that you knew really well, rather than a general greeting. And I've completely changed now. And it's like, the, the, 
the going around the world and just just meeting all these people and saying high five good yeah. at you how lovely to meet you let's all have a nice cup of coffee together let's, and just enjoy life yeah let us know in the comment section if you want us to like do that in any united states england wherever and just like go around a different give you a schedule and be like we'll be at this we'll find some small business coffee shops that are and we'll exactly. and we'll sit around and have coffee and chit chat for a couple of hours and get to meet everybody face to face and you get to meet us in person and we get to meet you in person and you know and and that would be so fun because I would love yeah, it would be so fun and I think it's coming really soon I mean we really are seeing a lot of shifts at the moment of course there's a lot of hardship going on in certain places and and sending you know genuine love and and concern out there but I think this whole situation has brought globally I saw so much closer and I'm you know personally eternally grateful for that me too we're all just walking each other home we are oh thank you so much so hopefully we are speaking to Nick Alviar tomorrow night yes of course good luck to you Nick um and um have a really wonderful day everyone will we sign off should we say why should we have people send prayers out to him or yeah I think so we have people know that he was at um, the thing that happened in January back a couple of years, no, about a year ago, a little over a year ago. We all know what we're talking about. So just put your prayers out there and hopefully we'll see him tomorrow. So love to everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye guys.